Um, I'm having a hard time logging on. All that's right. Things, right. That's right. Par for the course. By the way, hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Joe? It's great to see all your faces. Let me tell you. <laughs> All right, we are setting up here. <clears throat> All right, Joe, turn it over to you. All right, well, uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome, the coaches and the fans that are joining us on uh, Facebook Live. Uh, welcome to the CSAC Men's Soccer Coaches Fireside Chat as part of the CSAC's Razor Game Program. Uh, my name is Joe Pavlo. I'm the athletic director at Rosemont College, and I'm also the CSAC men's sports chair. So I will be leading tonight's discussion as we engage our nine men's soccer coaches from the CSAC uh, in a conversation and a question and answer roundtable, just get to know them all a little bit better and to have some fun. So there is a, a hashtag on social media um, as a way for you fans to get your questions answered by our coaches. So stay tuned at the end of our roundtable to see if your uh, question gets asked uh, a little bit later. So we're going to start out by allowing our coaches to introduce themselves. So we're going to go in alphabetical order by order of institution. Um, we would turn things over to, uh, to Bill from Bryn Athens, but he's not here right now. So uh, from there, we're going to move to the next person in the list. And when I call on your name, I'm just going to ask you to say your name, your school, how many years you've been coaching at your school, and uh, share with us your favorite athletic memory, either from your playing days or from your coaching uh, experience. So uh, from Karen, Coach Luke Gibson, you're up. Hey, I'm uh, Luke Gibson. I've been at Karen for uh, seven, seven seasons. I don't, I don't know if it counts with COVID now, so it's seven or eight. So... Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I've been here for, for seven years. Uh, and I guess my, my favorite athletic moment, uh, at Karen would have been, uh, the first time we kind of got over the hump and, and, and made it into playoffs, uh, three years ago. That was, that was a big moment, um, for our guys and, and for the program. So that was fun. All right. Great. Thank you. Josh from Centenary. Yeah. Josh Spivak from Centenary University. Um, been coaching here for, well, head coach for three years. I've been coaching here since 2009 and uh, played here at uh, Centenary in 2006 and 2008. Um, favorite, favorite athletic memory was probably our first conference championship in uh, 2013. Gotcha. John from Clark Summit. Uh, I'm Coach Stiles. Um, this is my first season uh, here coaching at Clark Summit University, so I don't necessarily have a a ton of favorite coaching memories. So favorite memory would probably be part of the uh, being selected and being a part of the All-American Banquet back in uh, 2013. Great. Thanks. Joe from Keystone. How you doing? My name is Joe Schneck. I'm the men's star coach here at Keystone College. Been here eight seasons, counting uh, this COVID season. Um, and my favorite memory, I don't, I don't have a favorite memory. Um, I think I have a ton of memories that have all been pretty special. But I think as head coaches, we all remember our first win. And uh, for me, it took a little bit longer than I would have liked for it to take in 2013. But uh, after, after 12 games, we finally got there and uh, won an overtime game down in Immaculata on their turf. And uh, I won't forget that moment for, for a long time. All right, great. Jesse from Rosemont. Hi, I'm uh, Jesse Zafiratis, Rosemont College. I'm in my second year here at Rosemont. My favorite coaching memory was in 2018. I was the head men's coach at Penn State Brandywine, and we won the USCAA National Championship in double overtime against Johnson and Wales. Great. Chris from St. Elizabeth. Hey, my name is Chris Garcia uh, from St. Elizabeth University. Uh, it's my second year this year. Um, my favorite memory was from my playing days. Um, I trained with the first team for Red Bulls, for the New York Red Bulls. Uh, I trained alongside with Henri and Rafa Marquez wow. and things like that. So. Um, it's a, it was a one-time experience, so. Awesome. All right, great. Steven from Valley Forge. 
Yeah, Steve Bauer at the University of Valley Forge. My first first year at the, at the program. Uh, my favorite, probably most memorable moment was as an assistant at Arizona Christian University in 2018, uh, winning the Golden State Athletic Conference uh, for the first time in program history and going to nationals. It was big time for the for the group. It was, it's a good special memory. I'm excited to make some more here at uh, UVF. Great, great. Caleb from Wilson. Yeah, Caleb Davis. I've been uh, coaching the men's program here. This will be my sixth year. Uh, I've been at the institution going on eight, eight or nine years. I would say my favorite memory uh, would be in year four of our program's existence, playing in the championship game in the CSAC. Awesome. Um, so thank you, everybody, for going around and introducing yourselves. Um, Bill is still having tech issues, so uh, so we'll move on and. Hopefully he'll join us shortly and we'll uh, backtrack a little bit. But uh, for now, we're going to hop right into our questions. So I want to hear from all of you, but uh, we're going to mix up the order a little bit. So I'll call on you for uh, responses to each of the questions that we'll go through. Uh, the first question of the evening is, uh, what do you enjoy most about being a part of the CSAC? So Joe from Keystone, we'll start with you. Yeah, I think uh, things have changed quite a bit during my, my eight years here in terms of the CSAC, you know, a lot of different faces and obviously different teams. But I think the one constant that's been throughout uh, the old and then the new one is uh, the mutual respect the coaches have. I enjoy that part of it, you know, the camaraderie. And no matter how heated things get or tense on the sideline, we know that in a few weeks we'll be seeing each other on the recruiting trail or the different camps that we work and and uh, we're colleagues at that moment and have great relationships. So I think that, that for me has been the one constant and the nicest thing about working in the CSAC. Great, Caleb, how about you? I would say one of the biggest uh, for us, you know, we're still fairly new to this conference. So coming from the NEAC that had a huge mix of public and private schools to the CSAC, which is all private schools, that was huge for us. Uh, I enjoy that the level of competition seems to be a whole lot more uh, even across the board. All the games are tight. Anybody can win on any any given day, which is is fun to be a part of and, and the coach. And, and um, I, I just see that getting even better. So that's what I like. Great. Jesse, you're next. Uh, I like the competitiveness of the league, similar to what Caleb said. I think any given day, you know, one through eight, one through nine, it's, you know, if you don't, if you don't bring your best, you could lose or, I think that's the joy of college sports. So I would just say that the balance in the league is what I like the most. All right, Josh, you're up. Yeah, I think it's um, just being in the CSEC for so long now is just the adaptability um, from the schools we had to the schools we have now. And like these guys are saying, it's still competitive. Guys are still um, connecting and talking on the recruiting trail on that. So just staying – uh, being very adaptive and um, figuring out the next step all the time. Luke, you're up next. Yeah, I mean, a lot of what everybody else said, and, and uh, I think the other thing is just kind of the location of schools, you know. Um, it's just nice that our, our student athletes get to be students too, where we're not doing a ton of overnights, uh, you know, and then as a, a dad, I get to, to be home every night and with my family, that's like something I really value that get to do what I love and, and not compromise and kind of those other things that, that, that make us tick. All right, great. Steven. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to be a part of, the, of this group. Uh, been on kind of the outside looking in through this, this process. Was hoping to obviously crack into it this fall, but things have kind of postponed. So I'm just looking forward to I've had some opportunities to talk to a handful of you so far. Uh, been super welcoming and, and, and awesome with that. So that's exciting. So just excited to be able to compete in a conference that is competitive, like you said, has some parity to it. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm looking forward to be, to finally get a first full year in at some point, you know, whenever that looks like. I'm sure John Eric probably going to say something similar being brand new himself, but, you know, UVF being first year full-time members as well, I think is massive for our school too, just in general. Great. Chris. Um, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I agree with most of the coaches. Um, I believe the conference is, you know, uh, the right competitiveness um, being my first year with the CSAC here. Um, and I also like that all the coaches are pretty much down to earth. Um, so, yeah. And finally, John Eric. 
Yeah, so um, kind of like what Steven said, like on the outside looking in, I've been excited to, to be a part of the conference from a, a competitive standpoint. And then as uh, Coach Gibson mentioned, just geographically, we're all pretty, pretty close. Like I've been a part of conferences like three, four hour trips every week. And it's just, uh, it's nice to be able to have something uh, close uh, as well as having, you know, um, guys who are, you know, uh, as Coach Garcia said, down to earth, getting to know some of you guys and looking forward to continuing to get to know uh, on the field, hopefully soon. All right, awesome. Hopefully uh, this question will allow for a little bit more differentiation in the answers. Uh, so the next question is name one fact about your athletic background that your team doesn't know. So Josh from Centenary, we're going to lead off with you. Uh, uh, a fact that my team doesn't know my athletic background, probably that I was actually a really good baseball player when I was a kid. Um, and I mean, I obviously don't talk about that much, but um, yeah, like uh, I really love the sport of baseball, um, but just got too bored and had to, had to stick to soccer at a young age. And uh, uh, yeah, so I was, I was actually really good. And um, but uh, yeah, it just didn't work out. All right. Fair enough. Chris. Um, I would say it was from my playing days, like Coach uh, Spivak was saying. Um, I think that a lot of people don't know this, that I have a lot of – well, I have a lot of acquaintances and friends that are playing professionally right now. Um, I still keep in contact with them. Um, like the likes of Matt Miazga. I was just literally talking to him last week, um, congratulating him uh, with the transfer move to Anderlecht and things like that. So, um, so yeah, it's just so many people that you know. Um, from the playing days. So. All right, great. Luke? Man, I, probably that I was at some point an athlete would surprise them now, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess it's that, you know, I'm, probably my first love when I was younger was basketball, but uh, yeah, if I had to, had to give an answer, it would definitely be that at some point I could actually move around the field and resemble an athlete, you know. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Steven? Um, my players don't know a lot about my athletic career because we're still just getting to know each other. So pro probably the first thing is that I got my first real college minutes because the person ahead of me in the depth chart didn't bring soft grounds, and it was really rainy. So I got my first college minutes just because I had soft grounds uh, that I had just bought the week before coming from Arizona to the East Coast never worn them before. I just happened to have them in my bag and that got me my minutes. It was big time. <laughs> That's good. Caleb. Uh, I would have to say that um, being from central Pennsylvania, wrestling is huge here. So I wrestled all through school, uh, actually went farther in my wrestling career into uh, districts and states than I did playing soccer. So um None of my players probably ever knew that. So that's a big one for, for me. John Eric. Um, something that my players probably don't know. Uh, I was homeschooled all the way through uh, like 12th grade and I was only four foot six uh, going into high school. So. All right, Jesse. Similar to what Luke said, uh, basketball is my first love. Still my favorite sport, to be honest. I love soccer, but I love, love, love basketball, Joe, as you know. Unfortunately for me, only being 5'7", five, 5'8", five, on a good day, you can't play more than the point guard spot, so that didn't work out too well for me. All right, Joe from Keystone. Yeah, so similar to Luke, uh, since I jump into training every so often with our guys, in fact, even as uh, recently as last night, uh, they will definitely know that I wasn't the most athletic guy on my college team. So they, they know that. Um, what they don't know is that similar to a lot of you guys, I actually played varsity ice hockey before I played varsity soccer, before I made the varsity soccer team. So wow. I, play, I played hockey all the way through junior year of high school. Gotcha. All right. And, um, and Bill O'Neill from uh, Bryn Athen has joined us now. So um, Bill, I'm going to come back to you for this question, but first I'm just going to give you uh, a chance to introduce yourself and along with that, um, uh, tell us how long you've been coaching at Bryn Athen and um, uh, the other item along with that was you were going to tell us, um, uh, I lost my place, um, 
and your favorite athletic memory, either as a Got player it. or a coach. That's what you're going to chime in there yes. with, Bill, if you could. So can you guys hear me? I was having problems with my microphone earlier. All's good. Awesome. Um, so yeah, my name's Bill O'Neill. I am the, uh, I'm actually the head men's and women's soccer coach at Brent Athens College. I'll be going into my fifth season there. Um, you know, I came there from uh, being an assistant coach at uh, Holy Family uh, University and then an assistant coach at uh, Rowan University as well. Um, so yeah, I, we're excited. We've been a two-year member uh, to be a two-year member of the CSAC, which is, uh, it's great. And and uh, loving all the initiatives that, that are going on uh, with, uh, you know, the, the conference right now. And, uh, you know, for me, my, uh, so I have two, actually, um, two special moments. One is when we were my second year in my women's program, uh, we actually wound up making the semifinals of the uh, NEAC conference uh, uh, semifinals. Uh, there we actually beat Lancaster Bible and penalty kicks uh, in our second year of existence of the program, which was pretty, pretty awesome and, and never even thought that that would be a possibility at the time. Um, the second uh, greatest athletic uh, uh, accomplishment was I actually won the 19, uh, 1990 <laughs> national championship and with Rowan uh, University. So awesome. All right. Great. Um, so if you could just wrap us up and finish us off question two and uh, Bill, tell us a little bit about your athletic background that your team wouldn't know. Um, that I am an all around great athlete. I was actually a four star. Uh, I used to play um, all four sports all the way up until like my uh, junior, high, uh, junior year of high school. So I played uh, basketball, baseball. Um, I actually started out being a football player. I was a quarterback for my uh, little guys uh, football. I was like 65, 85 pound guys. So um, I used to, that used to be my real passion until I never really grew. So I couldn't see over the center's head. So that was kind of how I moved <laughs> over to soccer. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Thanks everybody. So we're going to move on to the third question and uh, this one should be a little bit quicker. So uh, how would your team describe you in one word? We're going to lead off with John Eric. Uh, probably energetic. Um, I've always been somebody like to, to bring a high level of energy and, um, it's probably one of the first things they would say about me in like training sessions and stuff like that. All right. Great. Luke. Passionate. All right. Steve. Uh, cold, uh, but like literally cold cause the transition from Arizona has been a little tough. The last <laughs> couple of have been a bit dreadful. <laughs> Uh, no, probably, probably dry, probably really dry. Probably is the best one. All right. Bill. Um, I don't know how to describe a relationship builder. That makes sense. All right. Uh, Jesse. Energetic. <laughs> Perfect, Jess. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I don't believe we, I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> Dude, I think we can all that. <laughs> uh, Joe, you know, I, I didn't want to presume, so I just had my assistant coach tonight at training get the guys together and just ask them. So <laughs> this is coming right from their mouths, but uh, they 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 said humble. It was also calculated was another word. So I knew I was going to get roasted for that one, but I told my team I was telling you guys that. So it is what it is. <laughs> All right, and we can uh, we can confirm that we can go back back and, and ask them to to verify. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. All right, Josh. Um, same thing is uh, passionate, but sometimes overly passionate. I I would admit, a little too right. crazy. Caleb, dedicated. All right, and finally, Chris. Uh, serious. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, our next question, what do you like to do in your downtime or to blow off steam? Chris, we'll start with you. Uh, when I can, um, I work out, uh, try to stay active, um, try to go play pickup, um, can't stay away from the game. Uh, so anything workout related, staying active uh, or just playing pickup. All right, great. Caleb. Uh, family. I have two little young ones, a three-year-old and a 15-month-old little girl, both girls. So, um, especially right now, it's daddy daycare. So, <laughs> spending time with them, it goes fast. I can relate. Josh, you're up. 
Yeah, same thing, family time. Um, you know, even with, with the COVID, it's been awesome. Um, so it's nice to have some family time and, and go back to that every night. All right, Luke. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's the same, you know, just uh, family. So just really blessed to have two, two healthy kids and, and, a, and a spouse that, that allows me to coach too. So I'm, I'm winning, you know. <laughs> Phil, uh, definitely uh, family time uh, down the shore. Um, but, you know, the, uh, with, with everything that's going on in the world, I actually have a senior at home, a high school senior at home. So I've been actually been able to enjoy his high school senior year. So that's, uh, it's been pretty interesting. It's pretty, pretty awesome to be able to do. All right, Joe. Yeah, between my family and uh, the program, obviously there's not a lot of free time in there because I have three little ones, eight, six, and four. Um, but I do enjoy fishing. So anytime I can drop a hook in the water, I will do it. <laughs> All right. Steve. Uh, yeah, I'll reiterate. Uh, I got a three-year-old uh, daughter and wife. Uh, that takes up a lot of time. It's been, it's been great moving across the country when, when I'm not working on this house that we're trying to get into. Uh, I'm grilling. Got, I'm a big uh, – I got to be careful how we word this, but I got a Traeger smoker. So smoking as much uh, different meat as possible. You give it to me, I'm going to smoke it. It doesn't matter if it's a pizza, I'm throwing <laughs> it in there. We don't need an oven. We're just going to we're gonna throw some wood pellets on and call it a day. So that's that's where we spend a lot of time is just outside there. All right. John Eric. Yeah, um, actually, same as Joe. I love to go fishing. Whenever there's a chance to, to get outside, um, like to be out on the water. All right. And lastly, Jesse. Uh, I would just say a ton of running and just being outside and, you know, just in, enjoying the fresh air. All right. Sounds good. Uh, our next question, who is your sports mentor and why? Jesse, we're going to start off with you this time. Oh, man. This is, this is a tough one for the guys by tier, but I'm really sorry. So for me, I would say when I went to LaRoche University, uh, I got really fond with their head men's basketball coach and AD, and he was like a father figure slash mentor for me. He passed away in 2010, but he was just a really good mentor for me as a person, as a father figure, as a coach. So, you know, really pushed me to become great at what I wanted to do. So for someone like him, you know, he's been a big mentor for me, even though he's not alive. Actually, his tenure passing is coming up December 10th. But he's definitely been someone who's been a huge mentor for me, whether it's just as far as coaching or relationship or anything. And, you know, definitely Coach, uh, coach Lyon from LaRoche University for sure. All right. Great. Joe. Um, you know, I've had the, I've, I've been blessed with working for a lot of great coaches in the two schools that I was at before Keystone. Um, but for me, I, I think, uh, and obviously I don't know him personally, but a guy that I, I have a ton of respect for in terms of the way that he coached his teams uh, and the way that he went about that uh, is Tony Dungy, obviously from a different sport. Um, but a lot of principles uh, that I try to emulate and a guy that every day was able to elicit high performance out of his team, but at the same time, do it in a way where you treat people well and make them better people. And, uh, you know, I've tried to do that every day here at Keystone. So I, I really admire what he's done. All right. Great. Thank you, Chris. Um, I would say not, not specifically just a sports mentor, but just a mentor in general, I would say just my family. Um, I learned everything from them from life to soccer um, and again, I'm, I'm the man who I am today because of them. So I would say my family. So. All right. Thanks, Steve. Uh, yeah, I had the, the opportunity to coach with, a, with an awesome staff over at Arizona Christian and, and one of the other assistants uh, that just volunteered his time. Barry Swartz uh, was a guy that kind of took me on his wing and a little bit further around the, down the road uh, myself uh, has got kids in college going into college that he's seen them go through the process he just loves people loves the sport uh, and loves putting those two things together um, just his intentionality with people and how he cared for them and loves them is is something that you know I try to try to take with me you know now at UVF is just trying to merge those two things together and just having you know not taking yourself too seriously and understanding that it's an opportunity to love and and to help people grow uh, kind of like what coach Joe was saying like opportunity to make them better uh and he he does a great job of that and he's been super helpful for me awesome great john eric 
Um, yeah, so somebody who's really impacted me not only as a, as a, as a coach, but also as a person is actually the, the former women's coach at the University of Valley Forge, Ryan Gautier. Um, it's just somebody who's, uh, since I moved to Pennsylvania, really taken me under his wing and been able to show me, like, not only what it means to be a good coach, but also, like, wanting to, to lead, uh, whether it be young men or women, um, to be better people, better players, um, and just... Uh, has really made a big impact in how I view the game. Great. Luke? Yeah, I had the opportunity at a, a previous job to work for a guy, Josh Beers, who, who was a huge influence in my life. Um, just was a super relational guy uh, who was able to, to get the most out of his players just because he cared and they knew that. Um, and I, I think he also just uh, really modeled the importance of empowering others to lead. Um, and that's been something that uh, you know, I've uh, tried to take with me to, to, to Karen and uh, you know, kind of every facet of my life. All right, great. Caleb? I would say my high school uh, wrestling coaching staff, so not only the head coach, but the assistant coaches as well. Uh, had a lot to do with our success, not only as individual wrestlers, but as a team. Uh, and that showed not only uh, through practice and, and uh, matches, but off the, off the mat as well. So they were dedicated to how we were doing in the classroom, uh, even so far as to making sure guys had rides home uh, in the cold weather when the wind and wind and snow is blowing and things like that. So that stuck with me uh, even to this day, being a college coach, making sure the guys are are uh, okay in every aspect of life, not just, you know, at practice and at games, because it, it matters outside of, of our sport as well, how they're doing. All right, great. Josh. Uh, well, Jesse, I, I think that Joe gave you a softball there, man. You should have definitely said Joe. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but uh, for me, it was, um, uh, Keith O'Connor, who was the previous coach at Centenary in, in, in the CSAC, um, played for him for three years and then coached with him until, uh, I think it was 2017. Uh, um, but just um, the way we get along now, um, you know, when we were coaching together at the, the tail end of it, you know, just being able to um, – read each other's mind, finish each other's senses in the way um, that we did. The way we started out, I would never have, I would have never have uh, thought that. We would always go back and forth, always butt heads. Um, but as we figured out, it was for the same exact reason. Um, but I was just young and stubborn and um, wanted things my way. But he, he taught me a lot um, in just team management, um, we always joke around overly organized. You know, I still have some of his organizational stuff here in the office because um, I can't do it. But, um, but yeah, just the, the total, the total package, you know, um, really making sure that um, everything is running smoothly, but the kids, like as Caleb said, the kids are taken care of um, off the field as well uh, and, and creating those bonds. So I'm still able to talk to them mostly every, every day um about anything about soccer about life so it's been a great relationship thanks and finally bill yeah uh my mentor would be my aunt she actually coached uh in the uh, philadelphia public school system for 35 years um she coached uh field hockey and uh softball and uh the one thing that she just you know, obviously instilled in me was the thing that I think that, you know, I, you know, when people look at me, it's like, I, you know, building relationships with your players is so important and critical, um, you know, and, and that's the things that we talk about that, um, you know, when, when, when players come and whatever, it's a, it's, it's a family thing for, you know, for a lifetime. So that's kind of what we're, you know, what it is. My, my aunt still talks to players that she coached 35 years ago, you know, wow. and there's still relationships with her. And so, um, so I realized how important it was that that, what an impact that makes in the friendships that you make and um, how important those relationships are for lifelong experiences. So. Well, uh, thanks everybody. That's uh, it's you know, kind of powerful to think about why we all do what we do. Right. And we kind of take those people that have meant something to us and kind of, you know, try to frame it and put it in a couple 
sentences and it's, you know it's not always easy to do and sometimes it's moving and emotional but i think it's uh it's always really important to kind of keep that in mind so i appreciate everybody sharing that with us um so at this time i'm gonna turn it over to adrian for our social media questions that have been submitted by our fans i know there's at least one and uh these questions are for everybody so we can kind of just jump in one at a time and you know everybody can feel free to answer the question but uh you know, the order is going to be a little bit uh, scattered and random. So, Adrian, I'll turn it over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. And yes, I hope this one will be a lot of fun. Um, this social media question was submitted by Centenary Athletics. And uh, the question is, we know... <laughs> It's all your fault, Josh. <laughs> oh, thank God. I like that. That's like the extra homework. Are we getting homework today? What's going extra on? Extra credit. That's right. That's oh, right. Oh, my God. So Centenary Athletics says that we know a lot of the players have rituals and superstitions for game day. Do any of you coaches have game day rituals or superstitions that hopefully if you share, we will not totally jinx you for your next game. <laughs> so feel free to jump in. Anybody have a game day ritual or superstition? Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, I, yeah, I have one. Um, I would, I always, uh, if I, we, have success or win a game, I will always wear the same outfit the next time. So I've been wearing a lot of different outfits the last couple of years, but <laughs> I plan on wearing it. Listen, I plan on wearing the same outfit next, uh, you know, when we get a chance to compete. So like, that's really good. So. Nice. Uh, I have one, it's like, it involves food. So for me, for every game, I drink a Red Bull and I have a little, and I have a Twix bar. So just a little bit, of, I need a little bit of juice, a little bit of energy. There's some days that, I that, that explains so. a lot. That explains <laughs> yeah. a lot. I don't think anybody else has to talk. I don't think. I, don't. I think there's there's eight or nine people in this room that might disagree with Jesse needing more sugar and energy before a game. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Yeah, mine's the same with Bill. Um, try to wear the same outfit, um, <laughs> same clothes. Um, 2013, when we went on a run, we had some, uh, the the polo shirt I was wearing was not good, not good. <laughs> and uh, uh, my wife, my wife was yelling at me and uh, I was I said, I can't wash it. She's like, you stink. But I'll just throw a sweatshirt on over the top and a uh, cologne and we'll be all right. Maybe an axe, axe back in the day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? I guess they'll keep them a secret in hopes that they still work for when we get back to competing. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. That does it for our CSAC Men's Soccer Coaches Fireside Chat. I want to thank our moderator, Joe Pablo. I want to thank all of you head coaches for participating tonight. And thank you to the fans for tuning in on Facebook Live. All right, everybody, make sure to mark your calendars for our next Raise Your Game event, which is coming up on Wednesday, November 11th at 7 p.m. We will have a program hosted by Jay Butler and Kevin Jackson from Cairn University and Gretchen Levand from the University of Valley Forge. The program is entitled, Are Bible Teachings Relevant to Modern Sports? So again, that's Wednesday, November 11th at seven o'clock. And our next Coach's Fireside Chat is coming up on Wednesday, November 18th at seven o'clock when we will get to know the CSAC women's soccer coaches. So mark your calendars for that. And finally, don't forget to check out csacsports.org slash raise your game for all the details about our raise your game programming this semester and follow the CSAC on social media with the handle at CSAC sports. So thanks again to everyone for tuning in tonight and have a great night and stay safe. Thanks everyone.